Hello, thank you for joining us today for the October 2018 installment of our Esri Law Enforcement Webinar Series. My name is Chris Delaney. I'm the Law Enforcement Technical Lead here at Esri. Uh, and today we'll, we'll be talking about how to use location technology to keep your teams tactically aware, connected, and safe using ArcGIS and Dracontis' Dragonforce suite of products. Thank you for joining us. And the place that I want to start today is talking a little bit about the context around the use of tactical teams in law enforcement. Uh, as you all know, um, there are a variety of scenarios in which tactical teams are deployed in most state, local, and federal law enforcement agencies, whether it is support of active shooter, exercises or real scenarios, execution of high-risk search warrants, um, supporting uh, hostage scenarios, uh, responding to civil disorder scenarios. And in all of those kinds of team-based uh, environments, location is a central part of ensuring the success and success of the operation and the safety of the officers who are engaged in that mission. And in many cases, uh, as you may have had direct experience, the way that location information gets organized is typically through something like what you see there on the screen, a, a whiteboard that describes a diagram of entry into the house or that um, clarifies approach vectors and staging areas for some kind of tactical operation. Uh, but that information usually sits in a whiteboard at uh, in a roll call briefing room or in the back of a, of a mobile vehicle or mobile command post and is not able to be shared with all of the other stakeholders that support the tactical team in supporting that overall mission and ensuring its success. Our customers uh, at Esri and at Dracontis have found that uh, tactical teams that are most effective are those that are most collaborative. So ensuring officer safety by having a clear understanding of where teams are currently, where they're supposed to be, where risk areas are, backups and safety locations are, ensuring that there's one authoritative source for, uh, for the mission plan itself, and that mission plan can be shared to everyone who needs it. Everyone's working off of one version of the truth. And when that actual plan is being executed, that information is able to be shared as it's generated. So intelligence gathered at locations can be shared in real time that might be relevant to other members of the overall team. And that communication generally, whether that's uh, exchange of information on a map or whether that is uh, audio or uh, file-based communication can occur seamlessly between teams in the field, between teams that are in a mobile environment to a command post, and in multi-agency scenarios that agencies are able to collaborate together. This is a, you know, a, a really important use case that's critical for the success of law enforcement agencies in these tactical scenarios. And, and Esri has been uh, proud to provide tools to support the mapping and location aspects of the, the needs of tactical teams for these kinds of situations. But mapping and location really respect, reflects only one of the, the team collaboration modes that exist in many of these scenarios, that there's a variety of other core capabilities that are essential to ensure a team is effectively able to collaborate in all of the different ways they need to in order to, to uh, ensure mission success. So, um, as a, you know, in, in light of that, uh, we've been working at Esri with uh, a business partner that's uh, called Dracontis out of Pennsylvania. And Dracontis makes a, a very well-known best-in-class suite of products called the Dr Dracontis Dragon Force suite of pro products that has been, uh, that has been uh, utilized very effectively in tactical scenarios. We've been very fortunate to um, 
recently worked together and released some new integration that leverages what Dracontis does extremely well with the ArcGIS platform so that data can be shared seamlessly across both of these platforms. So I'm joined today by uh, James Sim, who's the president and co-founder of Dracontis. Uh, and James is going to be walking us through uh, Dracontis' Dragon Force team collaboration uh, software, uh, the core capabilities that it has to enable tactical teams in the field, how they've been able to take their product and integrate it seamlessly so in our, to ArcGIS so that we have real-time collaboration across those two platforms to enable situational awareness everywhere. We'll spend some time doing some demos. We'll have some time for resources and questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, so without uh, any further ado, James, thank you so much for being here. I'll turn it over to you. Chris, thank you so much for that nice introduction. Uh, and thank you everyone for your attendance today. Uh, hello, my name is James Sim, president and co-founder of Dracontis. Today, my presentation is gonna be comprised of two major segments. One, a few uh, slides to help orient you to uh, Dragon Dracontis, the company, and give you a primer about Dragon Force, our mobile team collaboration platform, and our current integration with the ArcGIS platform. Then we're going to get to the fun part of the show, an actual live demo of Dragon Force in action, so you can see its various collaboration tools functioning, and also our integration with the ArcGIS platform. So that's our show for today. So our company, Intracontis, we are a software company based in Philadelphia, and we specialize in one area of expertise exclusively, and that is providing a common operating picture or shared situation awareness to public safety and enterprise customers. We have one product, Dragon Force, and this is a mobile team collaboration platform. Essentially, what we want to do is provide a secure collaborative workspace so that individuals can create and share mission critical information to accomplish their objectives more quickly, safely, and effectively. We believe that we have very unique uh, domain knowledge in this particular area because of our specialization in this space. The company has been in operation for the past 15 years, and initially we were actually a uh, technology transfer initiative out of an applied engineering university here in Philadelphia, Drexel University. A little shout out for Drexel. To basically support the dismounted warfighting efforts in Iraq and Afghanistan. So we're heavily funded by DARPA and U.S. Army CERDEC to really help equip, it's like these uh, mobile team members with the common operating picture they needed to uh, function more effectively. We since as I work very closely with the United States Department of Justice to go out to the marketplace and to actual end users and find out what their information sharing and collaboration needs are in very, very quick operating uh, situations, tactical operations, and also day-to-day -day patrol as well as large-scale emergency management. So quite frankly, it's like every member of the Dragon Force technical staff is embedded, it's like with SWAT officers, firemen, it's like subway workers, anybody that's out in the field, it's like whether they're carrying a gun, a fire axe, it's like, or a clipboard, to really understand it's like what their lives and stresses are when it comes to getting access to information that they need and access to their various teammates so they can get their job done better. So it's like we like to think that we have a very unique perspective in that space. Additionally, it's like we've been fortunate enough to partner with uh, you know, world-class partners like Esri and others to really get detailed access to the uh, public safety and emergency management spaces so that we can project the Dragon Force tools into this area. So that said, it's like even though we're very proud of the, the product that we've developed, at the end of the day, it's not our vision. This is really the aggregated vision of actual real-world operators and subject matter experts, and we like to just say that we're the ones to manifest their vision in software. The Dragon Force uh, platform is a mobile team collaboration software product. It has a series of core capabilities, you can almost think of an integrated Microsoft Office type of experience that we deliver on both mobile and uh, laptop, it's like our workstation environments. We have native implementations for both Android and iOS, and we also ensure that our user experience is identical across both platforms so they can train on Android but still run on iOS seamlessly. We also have a standard HTML5, it's like a client that runs on any web browser, so there's no software to install, you just log in and go. 
The core features that you're going to find inside of Dragonforce, number one, include the ability to support multiple teams or operations simultaneously. The fundamental building block of the Dragonforce collaborative space is what we refer to as groups. The properly permissioned users can form as many groups or teams as they wish, populate them with the uh, dream team members, it's like from their uh, department that they need to answer to a particular area, and then they will have a secure collaborative working space. The important thing to note is if you're not a member of the team, you don't have access to the data. So this en en enables us to have multiple secure teams in operation contemporaneously. Inside of these groups, the uh, team members will be able to monitor, it's like their ongoing both network connectivity and operational status. You'll see it's like what the fighting status of all your various chess pieces, if you will, are at the time. We provide a real-time uh, Blue Force tracking capability. We can do tracking rates as quickly as one per second, tracking individuals both on their native devices that are running Dragonforce, but also the ability to ingest external location feeds from everything from LMR radio systems to AVL vehicle tracking systems as well. We also offer an over-the-top text messaging service inside of Dragonforce, where you can broadcast messages to the entire team simultaneously, group-based chat, or one-on-one -on -one private conversations. Dragonforce also provides a uh, Dropbox, like if you will, file sharing experience so that any image or document, floor plan, et cetera, can be dropped into a collaboration group and automatically distributed to the entire team simultaneously. Dragonforce also has a very robust digital forms or situation report capability, such that any work, any paper-based document or workflow that the customer may have can be converted into a Dragonforce document as well, so that they can uh, turn their mobile devices into data capturing instruments. The nice thing here is that we can customize virtually any form or workflow that the customer has and inject it into to the current implementation of Dragonforce. This does not require a custom APK or release of Dragonforce. This is just a customized module that can be installed on a customer by customer basis. Our signature feature, and you'll see a lot of this later in our demonstration, is our interactive whiteboarding. Dragonforce uh, in a John Madden Monday Night Football style turns any map, or floor plan or picture that comes into a work group into a collaborative whiteboard. So you can literally, it's like start marking up your X's and O's and execute a tactical plan in real time, it's like drawing on the map. And this is one of the very exciting points of convergence we have with the ArcGIS platform so that you can take a very well, it's like established uh, mission plan developed on uh, inside of Esri's technology and then fuse it with Dragonforce and then augment it on the fly as so they get a very quick pace and add additional annotations and location information on the fly. And we'll demonstrate that for you shortly. And then lastly, but perhaps it's like uh, equally importantly, Dragonforce is a very powerful after action reporting tool capability. Literally, it's like every transaction that goes across the pl platform is being recorded. The text messages, the location reports, the situation reports that are filed, the pictures that are taken, and stored on the Dragonforce server for the customer so that they can uh, write after action reports for evidentiary purposes, training purposes, et cetera, hot washing after the fact. The Dragonforce uh, core feature set, one of the, our, our strengths we believe is its intuitive nature, especially for the mobile app. Our philosophy is that an end user should require zero to 10 minutes of training to be uh, fully functional like with the mobile app. It's like we have had uh, plenty of emergency management cases where quite literally it's like the customer just uh, emailed uh, a username and a password and a link to the, the app store or the play store to download an app. It's like for uh, responders or volunteers that were coming to their aid, they downloaded the app, logged in, were assigned to their particular uh, mission, mission package group, and we're able to function quite seamlessly with absolutely zero training whatsoever. The design also, it's like of the tools, it's like of course borrows heavily from many of the mobile paradigms that everyone's uh, familiar with. It's like mapping, text messaging, file taking and sharing and basic editing are very commonplace uh, capabilities today that from teenagers to it's like grandparents it's like can, can function 15 years ago when we we entered this space, this was purely the domain, it's like of uh, very bleeding edge uh, organizations in the military space using proprietary hardware and networks. 
now with the ubiquitous nature of smartphones and high-speed uh, mobile networks, and now with the onset of uh, FirstNet in the United States in particular, this is a commodity technology that has made this both accessible and affordable to agencies of any size. And again, it's like the ability to deploy Dragon Force fully with its feature set in a browser eliminates the need, it's like for a lot of uh, IT maintenance in the field. It's like the ability to, the basic barrier to entry is having either a smartphone and a laptop and access to an LTE, it's like our uh, IP network, is all you need to deploy Dragon Force very thoroughly. So team collaboration and these tools, what, what, what are they good for? Dragon Force can be deployed for a variety of missions. And I'll just take a moment it's like, to outline some of these because of the, some of them are actually quite topical in, in the moment. But at the core is the notion of a common operating picture. The one common thread that all of our customers, all of our users have is we view them as professional decision makers. And we believe that if we equip them with the appropriate platform and access to the information, both in their databases and systems and in the heads of their teammates, they will be able to arrive at faster, better, more effective decisions and carry them out more rapidly so that they'll be able to get to a better outcome. So therefore, it's like we see our customers deploying Dragon Force in a multitude of operations from day-to-day, -day, it's like public safety operations. We have some users filling out Dragon Force reports for their basic calls for service and accountability for day-to-day uh, -day operations. We have cut our teeth and perhaps like our most common deployment is in the tactical operation space where SWAT teams or counterterrorism units use Dragon Force to respond as quickly as possible to very complex scenarios. We have uh, customers in Indonesia right now, their search, national search and rescue team is using Dragon Force for uh, recovery efforts and search and rescue efforts for the recent tsunami it's like that, uh, that visited that part of the world. And again, it's like the ability to visualize the common operating picture, see what the current status of resources is, note where problem spots are and direct appropriate resources as quickly as possible, make Dragon Force a very valuable tool. Large scale event management, whether it's being planned for an upcoming Super Bowl or something that happens in a somewhat ad hoc manner, it's like a VIP is per uh, coming to town, it's like on a short notice visit, and you need to coordinate resources from a wide variety of agencies and entities to respond to that situation in the moment. Dragon Force is ideally suited for that. Data collection and forensics analysis, the ability to snap pictures of evidence, have them automatically geotagged, provide additional reporting. All of this can be done in Dragon Force very easily, and we'll demonstrate that for you as well. Let me pause for a second from the uh, operational features and talk a little bit about the Dragon Force deployment strategy in the back end. Okay. So our pyramid of deployment, if you will, starts with a Dragon Force domain. It's like a server or a series of servers that hosts the Dragon Force experience. This can be deployed either in the cloud. It's like we have uh, many deployments in Amazon's uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services area, GovCloud in particular for American public safety, but Microsoft Azure or a other uh, cloud providers globally, it's like will suit uh, Dragon Force's needs just as well. We can also deploy on-prem inside of a customer's infrastructure, providing them with a virtualization environment that they can install and maintain from inside their space, or even tactically. Dragon Force can be fitted for very small-scale operations and loaded up onto a rugged laptop and deployed anywhere in the field. All you need is to bring along an IP network to light up your area of operation, and you'll be good to go. A Dragon Force domain can be uh, divided up into what we call multiple departments. So a large-scale police department is like might divide Dragon Force into various uh, districts or policing uh, zones or precincts, or it's like have general patrol be in one department, uh, specialty teams like SWAT and canine and narcotics and another, et cetera, et cetera. The important point here is the customer can deploy as many departments as they need to carve up their uh, enterprise workspace. Each one of these departments is capable of functioning completely autonomously. They can have their own personnel, their own personal documentation, even customizations such as symbology, iconography, quick text inside the Dragon Force environment and function completely autonomously. But 
One of the great value propositions of Dragonforce is our ability to form what we call share groups. This allows properly authenticated users to create a collaboration space and then essentially create a dream team, drawing resources, both personnel and documents from the various departments that they have access to. The important point to note is only those resources that are overtly contributed into this collaboration space are shared. Otherwise, all the personalized personnel and documents from the respective departments remain completely independent and safeguarded. Only the data that comes into the collective working group is shared. Everything else remains private. This is especially useful for agencies that have uh, interactions from time to time with uh, outdoor outside agencies. We have some customers in the southern, southeastern part of the United States. They're dealing with a hurricane mop-up operations at the moment, but FEMA, National Guard, it's like other resources are coming in to assist them. They have the ability to create a surge or guest departments and bring in guest users to help them with that operation. And when that's done, they simply reset the passwords for those guest accounts and they can get ready for the next time. Customers in Florida that may have uh, visitors, VIPs from Washington coming down on a regular basis. Again, it's like can provision a guest counts for uh, Secret Service and others like federal agencies that interact with them from time to time. So again, Dragon Forest provides both scalability and flexibility for its deployment model. Now, as great as the Dragon Force Toolkit is, and by itself, it provides a lot of utility and value, we recognize that to be a truly great application and really serve our customers' needs, we need to play well with others. So this comes in the form of interoperability. Dragon Force was designed from day one in time, it's like to both consume and share information from a wide variety of platforms. We'll go counterclockwise around this document. Obviously, CAD and RMS are some of the backbone, it's like uh, capabilities in the public safety space, and many of our customers have uh, deployed and invested very heavily in these platforms. In the Dragonforce universe, integrations can be made with these platforms such that if a call for service originates in CAD, it can automatically be mirrored or duplicated inside the Dragonforce use. So a call at 123 Main Street in CAD automatically spawns a Dragonforce Group 123 Main Street, Main Street in our domain, then personnel that are added by the dispatcher from the CAD side are automatically populated in Dragonforce. This saves duplication of effort and obviously reduces time to response. Then any additional information, whether it be uh, additional pictures or text notes that are contributed by the dispatcher are also shared inside the Dragonforce environment. IP video is incredibly ubiquitous in our space, both in the public safety domain and through many of our enterprise customers. Dragonforce can either directly, it's like consume an IP stream, it's like from an endpoint, and bring that to an individual user or stream that to the entire group, or if a more robust uh, backend integration to a Genetech or milestone type system is required, that's fine too. It's like we can talk server to server to those backends, and then, then again, consume and distribute that information to all the various teams. One of the key points on our roadmap that you'll be seeing uh, probably very early next year is the ability to do point video streaming from Dragonforce interfaces as well. So that we will turn the camera on your mobile device into a, a Dragonforce video endpoint and be able to stream that to every team. Sensor integration, we, we view it's like all the payloads essentially as sensor inputs, it's like into Dragonforce, but some interesting projects that we've done are integrating with everything from uh, Samsung smartwatches to both provide notifications right to the wrist or monitor heart rates from the wrist as well and broadcast that inside of a Dragon Force. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, location is obviously a very key component in the shared situation where in a space. Therefore, the ability to track locations generated by both LMR, land mobile radio systems, or uh, vehicle location tracking systems as well, they can all be ingested into the Dragon Force platform and distributed. We have a dedicated uh, location proxy capability inside of Dragon Force, such that these uh, endpoints can be shunted to appropriate departments and groups so that only the right people are seeing what can be at times very sensitive tracking information. And then saving the best for last, our partnership with Esri. Esri, of course, being the dominant player in the GIS space, provides a, a wealth of capability to our customers and for them to say, capture and understand 
like uh, the lo location information, the where, if you will, of their environments. Dragon Forest is an excellent uh, operational tool and does have planning capabilities, but quite frankly, it's like pales in comparison to the capabilities that Esri brings to the table. So that said, it's like we wanted to leverage those capabilities so that you know, mission plans and other it's like uh, planning tools done in Esri could be seamlessly brought into the Dragon Forest environment and then shared with the multitude of people that are the tip of the spear for real-time operations. That said, it's like we didn't want to just be a greedy consumer of uh, ArcGIS information. We wanted to make this a much more symbiotic relationship so that we could actually take Dragon Force location data and annotations that are being composed in real time and share that back into the Esri platform. And that's what we're going to be demonstrating for you guys in just a few moments. To that point, it's like the bulk of the rest of our presentation is really going to focus on a lot of the mapping and GIS capabilities that both Esri and Dragonforce share. You're going to actually see us create a live mission plan inside of Dragonforce where you'll see that uh, anything that's created either on the handheld or our web-based application is shared contemporaneously with all of our users. And we have this ability to do both freeform annotation, place custom iconography or chess pieces, if you will, it's like onto the board, and consume real-time location information. Anything that's done on the handheld is immediately mirrored on the web applications and vice versa. From an integration point of view, it's like we'll show you some very nicely composed, it's like uh, Esri dashboards that Chris has put together for us. And see, it will show you how it's like a very elaborate mission plan that was comprised inside of the Arches platform will be made available inside the Dragon Force platform so that literally the end user will have the best of both worlds, both Esri GIS information and Dragon Force real-time whiteboarding and tactical information. Chris, do you want to take a few moments and tell us a little bit about it's like uh, some of the uh, stuff that we're going to see it's like as far as the, the dashboards that you've created? Yeah, th thanks, Jim. You know, as we've started to work on our partnership with uh, with Dracontis, you know, one of the really exciting things for us has been to uh, enable customers who are already utilizing the the really excellent system that they have in place with respect to Dragon Force, um, and to make our common customers be more effective. So um, as James mentioned, there's a, a variety of different uh, customers that they already have that are using this in real world law enforcement tactical, military tactical, emergency management tactical situations where they need a tool like Dragon Force to have true comprehensive team communication. But there's a larger world of mapping and location that Esri represents where organizations have invested time and effort in organizing essential data sets, whether that is um, geographic boundary layers or things of that nature, whether it is operational plans like for major special events, or whether it's authoritative integration with other systems of record, things like records management systems, calls for service, uh, vehicular um, AVL data or other GPS data that is being pulled from other systems. So the ability now to have that data that lives in the ArcGIS platform and to be able to incorporate that into any specific tactical scenario to improve situational awareness for us is a, is a really big win for, uh, for organizations that are trying to leverage both of these different pieces of, of technology at once and vice versa that those in a moment's notice, um, tactical plans that are being drawn up by a SWAT team, uh, that at a moment's notice, they can take that information. Not only do they get to be able to, to utilize that internally to their team for uh, operational awareness on that mission, but that that information is now accessible as a feature layer in WebGIS, inside your ArcGIS organizational portal, so that at a moment's notice, those layers can be dropped into any other map, as you see here. And you can see um, up on the, the upper left-hand corner, the individual layers that are showing in this web map. And you can see the two Dragon Force layers that have been created in real time and, and added into that map. 
to then power a variety of different applications in the ArcGIS platform, whether that's dashboards or uh, configurations of, of Web App Builder, whether that's the use of story maps. Uh, and so in that way, uh, we really do have now seamless two-way integration and communication between the Dragonforce platform and the ArcGIS platform so that data that lives in either platform can seamlessly go back and forth between the two. I think this really represents um, the way that moving forward we see ideal collaborations between business partners uh, that are working with Esri. We really want to promote this service-oriented approach to sharing so that anything that's accessible in your ArcGIS platform, you can push into any other business partner's application to use that information the way that you need for what that application does really well. And vice versa, that data that you want to consume inside of your ArcGIS platform that lives in another partner platform can easily be consumed through the common language of uh, web services. So this ripple, I think, Partnership with Tercontis represents um, the best of what's possible now and represents a model for how we envision um, delivering more value to you, our law enforcement customers, by making data be able to move more seamlessly across products. I, I'll turn it back over to you now, James. Chris, th thank you very much for that. So that said, it's like I don't want this to turn into death by PowerPoint onto the uh, live demo of Dragonforce. So now on my screen, I'm bringing up uh, two examples of the Dragonforce interfaces. On our left, Dragonforce Web that runs in your standard web browsers. In this particular case, we're using Chrome. On the right, Dragonforce Mobile. This is a projection of my Samsung Note 8 uh, mobile device running Android, it's like uh, showing the Dragonforce mobile interface. So on the left, it's like you can see in Dragonforce web, we're preventing, pre prevent, preventing, presenting a dashboard-like view where the end user has the ability to arrange the various Dragonforce tools or widgets into any configuration that's convenient for them, depending on the mission they're serving. A dispatcher will configure their screen one way, a uh, mobile team commander, it's like for a SWAT team, it's like something different. A uh, fire chief, it's like an emergency manager, it's like something completely different. The nice thing is, it's like you can configure this any way you wish, it's like uh, to uh, arrange your data as necessary. The tools that we're displaying here is the ability to show the various groups of which we're currently a member. As I said, it's like we can have multiple simultaneous groups going on, whether we're doing a search and rescue information for a lost child, or we're doing our demonstration here with uh, Esri uh, this uh, October afternoon. Each one of these is a completely independent environment with its own users and actions going on. Our uh, file management system is it gives us that uh, cloud-based, it's like our uh, server side, it's like uh, data storage, so that customers can have quick access to important information they need on a day-to-day -day basis. This could be the floor plans of critical infrastructure within their domain, the schools, stadiums, public buildings, et cetera, or access to IP camera feeds, uh, mug shots of various persons of interest that are uh, they're serving outstanding warrants for, et cetera. Plus, our roster or dashboard gives us a quick snapshot of the current state of affairs, who our users are, who's currently logged in from a network operations point of view, what their operational status is as well, so that we can quickly create new groups on the fly and populate them with the team members that we want. The same capabilities are replicated on the uh, mobile device as well. Here it's like we have a serial approach so that you choose the group of interest that you want and then the various tools that you have access to it's like are associated with that particular group. So you can see that we've tuned to our Esri October 2018 demo group. Here I have my text messaging capabilities, mapping tools, the various files that are associated with this, and access to the various resources that my department has. Again, those capabilities of grabbing floor plans, mug shots, and other documentation and bringing them into the group. Creating a new group and managing it is a very simple process. If you have the proper uh, authentication capabilities, you can form a new group very quickly. As we were discussing earlier in the presentation, if we had that call out at 123 Main Street, I can easily create a new group and name it. All right. From here, I'm presented with a concise dashboard of who my current members are. 
I can both assign them to the group and also give them uh, authentication as like for administrative rights as well, so they can help me with the operation. Just like that, I can create the group and everybody on that team will be notified. It's like uh, that they have received, it's like an invitation, it's like to the Dragon Force space. We can also inter interface with SMS gateways so that we can turn Dragon Force into a paging tool as well and send out an SMS alert to the mobile numbers that are associated with all of those users so they can log in and let us know what their operational status is. Okay. Once the group is created, we have our secure working space. So for the purposes of today's demonstration, our mission is to leverage two things that are going on at once. The nice drawing that Chris had put together earlier for his dashboard, we have access to in our mapping tool. I simply select, it's like uh, the mapping layer that has that. And as I zoom out, you can see it's like all the annotations that Chris had produced on his dashboard are now available inside of Dragon Force. And this is the Marine Corps Marathon taking place in Washington, DC. But as luck would have it, there's another special assignment that's been assigned today, and that's to escort, it's like a, a VIP, it's like a, through a tour of the Washington Mall and for a briefing over at the uh, White House. So on my mobile device as well, I will select my Esri demo group, go to the mapping tool, and I have a common view. And from here, we can demonstrate like many of Dragon Force's uh, real-time annotative capabilities. So I'm going to define my mission plan here for our uh, escort of our VIP. So first, I'm going to define our area of operations very quickly. This way, we can secure off a working border. And as you can see, as I go making my annotations here on my web app, this is all being reflected on my handheld instantaneously. Streets that we'll need to close off for the operation. And the tour guide route for the show. We'll pick a different color to differentiate that. There we go. So we'll start off down at the Lincoln Memorial work our way to the Washington Monument, and then head due north up for a reception at the White House. So you can see that very quickly, we were able to define our area of operation, start to like mark off, it's like the areas that we want to perhaps provide uh, some security checkpoints and so forth along the way. We can see the real-time location of the personnel that have been assigned to this particular task. And as they move through this space, it's like these updates will be made accordingly. Okay. In addition to the basic uh, annotation capabilities here, it's like we have assigned as our VIP, it's like to this particular area. So we can see who it is today. Right. This is an example of a Dragon Force situation report. So this is an actor spreadsheet where our customer can input information about who it is that we're actually protecting today. And it's Theresa May paying us a visit from the UK going to be working our way through uh, the DC area. So this situation report is number one, customizable for the customer's needs. We can have any data fields that they wish. And number two, this is a collaborative instrument. So if we change any of the information that's involved here, and I go into edit mode, and it turns out that if we weren't sure about uh, the state of affairs, and I updated that, right? This information would be flashed across the network and everyone would receive the update at the same time. So again, it's like we recognize that the common operating picture is not a static thing. It's something that's constantly changing depending on the uh, point of view. It's like if the person that has uh, eyes on target, if you will, they'll be able to contribute information and update the common operating picture from any mobile device and share it with the entire team simultaneously. Okay. So, as this tour is beginning, we'll go back to our map, right? Our security team is doing advanced surveillance and can pick up information and share that with the team as well. So and again, it's like any annotations, text messages they compose, pictures that they take will automatically be shared with the team. So as updates are made with the, for the location and status, it's like uh, of other things that are going on, on the map, this is going to show up for us as well. 
Right. We'll be working our way as I go over to the White House. And here, you can see we have our mission plan already set up for the interior, a floor plan that's been shared. And this is also available to the mobile users. And again, this is a fully collaborative whiteboard, so that if this needs to be changed on the fly, it's like the location of any of the uh, objects or new ones introduced, we can do this quite quickly. Okay. All right, real-time annotations being shared across the enterprise. So as our VIP has been making their way through the tour, it's like my advanced security team has been uh, recording. It's like some suspicious, uh, you know, persons or uh, materiel that we're finding in our way. This data is showable, is automatically geotagged, it's like on the map. Right? So not only can we see the location of the contribution, we can see it's like who the uh, individual is that's causing us problems along the way. So this can be done, it's like uh, directly from the, the mobile devices. So my director of engineering, Mark Zimmerman, is with me today. It's like doing some reconnaissance photos, both in DC and here in Philadelphia at the same time. And as he's capturing this information, as he walks around the uh, proverbial area, we can see what he's captured. Okay. He's captured another suspicious person. Oh, and there it is. So not only does Dragon Force capture and share the image, as I was saying earlier, it automatically converts this into a collaborative whiteboard. So not only do we see it's like uh, who came into the situation, but this guy, right, we can identify and tag as necessary. And again, you can see any annotation that's being made on the mobile device is being reflected on all the other devices simultaneously. This is a great differentiator. It's like, as you can imagine, in uh, these real-time workspaces where we may have a, a group of individuals, we need to single out a particular individual for a conversation, or it's like we have a side of a building, it's like where some suspicious activity is going on behind multiple windows, we can identify exactly the area that we want to uh, move into. Now, while we've been doing this, all of this information that we've been showing here on the Dragon Force map is automatically been shunted right, to the Esri ArcGIS server. So you can see it's like as we zoom in on Chris's uh, detailed drawing here for the DC Marathon, that the Dragon Force operation that's been taking place for our VIP ex escort has been superimposed in this area in real time. So any changes that we're making to the map are automatically reflected here in this area. So for my handheld, I'll actually add it's like another annotation to that space to you know, highly illustrate that point. So any annotations or additional icons that I'm placing now, you can see are literally showing up in real time. So we truly now have a global common operating picture, not only spanning multiple mobile devices in the field for our boots on the ground operators, we also have this common operating picture shared across two enterprise class platforms, both the Dragon Force collaboration space and the ArcGIS platform simultaneously. And Chris, it's like just going back to the comments you were making before, it's like this really is the type of intimate leveraging and intimacy that we want to strive for so that we can take, it's like the best of breed capabilities of both platforms and fuse them together. And I'll throw it back to you for a moment to comment on that. Yeah, th thanks, Jim. I, I think that's just, it's a really exciting example. And I think your, your demonstration really helps to um, drive that, ho that point home about how seamlessly they work together. And, and I think it really represents a, a, a new level of expectation that law enforcement agencies should have with respect to technology purchasing, uh, that this kind of integration is the, it is what the new normal should be, and your ability to work seamlessly in uh, in a pl in a platform or a piece of software that does a particular thing really well, and that you should be able to move that information seamlessly into another application that does that stuff uh, so does something else well is the way that you should work so that technology doesn't get in 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 your way of really mission critical scenarios and 
And this is a really good example of this, where what Dracontus does with your Dragon Force technology is a best-in-class uh, platform for tactical team collaboration. Great. That's not what Esri does. Esri does location, and Esri is utilized really widely for a ver wide variety of different missions. And so the ability to take information that's being captured in real time by tactical teams as part of their collaboration suite of, of tools and share that into other stakeholders who have a, a reason to see that, whether that is dispatchers, whether that is a larger command post, and collaborate and integrate into other data sources as well, uh, is, is really represents the, the next generation of how technology can truly help uh, law enforcement missions um, realize re, be realized at the, the safest and most effective form possible. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Chris. And I think an important point to emphasize is that we didn't do this because, you know, I thought it was a good idea or Mark thought it was a good idea here. We did this because our customers demanded this because they thought it was a good idea. It's like we have many customers that see Dragon Force and understand the face validity of what we're doing and see the, the immediate value proposition that we're offering. But then they say, wait a second. It's like, we've got all this great mapping data and all this GIS information. We know where every, it's like a fire hydrant is, that like we have floor plans of schools. We know where our critical infrastructure is and that lives over in Esri land. Can we bring that into here so that we can bring that to the actual end user and expose that in real time and then also share that experience that that endpoint user has in the field with the GIS experts that are in-house as well? And we said, sure, why not? It's like, that seems like a good idea. Let's put that together. So that was really the impetus. And again, is very consistent with the history of our company being very responsive to real world needs and problems to be solved as opposed to uh, inventing new frills and so forth. So at that, it's like I will uh, pivot back, it's like to our presentation, so we can talk about some of our resources and other capabilities and answer any questions that, that people may have. Okay. So Dragon Force is a great application. It's best shown live and it's best shown in, in your own hands. So we, we invite, it's like our audience to contact us because we would be happy to set up a Dragon Force trial and evaluation environment with you. And this is the sort of thing that can be deployed, you know, not in the next days or weeks or months in advance, like in the next hours to give you, it's like a test account so that you can actually kick the Dragon Force tires, if you will, on your own devices in your own infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, it's like if you don't find this to be an easy and valuable application to use, we're doing something wrong in our design process, and I'd like to hear about that. So additionally on our website, it's like we have a variety of uh, training videos and resources inside the Dragon Force Academy that we welcome you to avail yourself of to both educate yourself about Dragon Force and also the role of a common operating picture tool and shared situation awareness in public safety applications. So, Chris, what kind of questions do we have today? Well, for, first off, I, I want to say thank you very much, Jim, James, for joining us today. I think that was a, a really exciting webinar. Had a great opportunity to to see the kind of compelling set of communication capabilities that are essential to making um, tactical team-based collaboration work. Um, I, you know. I, and I think represents the, you know a, a best in class approach for the future of what um, working between different business partners should look like. <clears throat> There's been a couple of questions that, that came in. Um, the, the first one that came in is a question about the the symbology that you have in Dragon Force. Is that symbology um, a, able to be changed in any way to fit standards that an agency might be using? No, I, I, absolutely, Chris. That's an excellent question. So, yeah, so the, the icons that we were showing uh, in today's demo, there's nothing special about them. They are JPEGs, PNGs, SVG graphics that can be uploaded and completely managed by the customer. So this is not something that uh, you need to invoke uh, the, the mothership here at Tricontis to do. You can do it on your own, updating. It's like your own palette to suit yourselves for your particular uh, application. Plus, uh, just going back to one of the earlier slides where I was showing that Drag uh, Dragon Force domain can be uh, divided up into multiple uh, departments, 
here's a case where each department can have its own customized symbology as well. So what symbols the SWAT team or the police want may be different from the emergency management or fire departments. Each one of them can have their own set of uh, symbology. Great, great. Another, another question is, um, what are the different ways in which you deploy Dragon Force into a customer environment? Right. So we tried to be extremely flexible in this particular space. I mean, the, to today, it's like uh, cloud-based technologies are incredibly powerful for a variety of reasons. They're secure, they're reliable, the value proposition as far as being inexpensive for the amount of computing uh, horsepower you can uh, purchase makes it very easy for us to deploy in cloud platforms. We are partners with Amazon AWS, but we work with any cloud provider uh, globally as well. If you're not quite ready for the cloud or that's not appropriate for your agency, we can do what we call an on-prem uh, deployment of Dragon Force. We will give you a series of virtual machine appliances that you will stall, it can install within your IT infrastructure, whether that be a Linux or Windows backend, it doesn't matter. And then you can manage it in a completely walled garden environment and be as secure as you like. And as I also mentioned early in the presentation, we can go tactical. Dragon Force can be deployed on a mobile computer or as so that you can literally go into your mobile command post and go to the middle of the desert or the outback in Australia, where we have several customers as well, and conduct operations there. You'll just need to bring your own IP network with you. And again, it's like uh, we have a variety of partners that can provide you a, a mobile IP cloud. It's like to support your dismounted operations. Great question, Chris. Yeah, actually, I think you may have may have partially answered the next question, but the, the next question was, uh, are you, do you do business exclusively in the United States or are you, uh, do you have international customers as well? No, we, we are, we are fortunately, it's like a, a global uh, company. It's like uh, Dracontis has Dragon Force deployments on every continent except Antarctica <laughs> at the moment. And I am uh, angling to uh, get something down there at the, uh, one of the research centers. <laughs> it's like if I have to go down there and give it to them for free, it's like I just want that seventh continent. But no, we have a, we have a large scale deployments uh, internationally uh, in Australia in particular, the Middle East, uh, Europe as well. It's like some of our deployments there, it's like uh, actually support entire countrywide or continent-wide uh, deployments with uh, quite literally tens of thousands of users using Dragon Force contemporaneously. Great. Well, th thank you again, James, for uh, sharing your product with us today. I think this is a, a really exciting uh, new way to think about how your uh, investment in Esri technology can be extended through business partners that work very closely with Esri. Uh, and, you know, as I mentioned, this is uh, just one of an ongoing series of webinars that we do on a bi-monthly basis. In fact, uh, basically every other week we have one webinar or another going on for our pu for public safety generally. You'll find the entire list of upcoming webinars at esri.com slash pswebinar. Uh, and at that location, you can see not only the upcoming webinars uh, for not only law enforcement and national security, but for uh, PSAP and call taking and uh, fire and emergency management. Uh, and in addition, you can see uh, previous recordings of our webinars, which is a great library of resources on um, topics relative to the ArcGIS platform. They can be a great uh, place to um, find, uh, find what you're looking for from a, from a certain capabilities perspective or learn a little bit more about the ways that you can apply the ArcGIS platform to your workflows. And um, that just reinforces that in, in case you were looking for a copy of this webinar, the uh, th this w is being recorded and that recording will be available uh, in the next few days on our public safety webinar site. And if you attended the webinar and registered, you'll also receive an email that will um, provide a, a link out to that, to that video if you wanted to be able to share that with anyone else. Um, James, you can just move to the last slide real quick. I just wanted to say one other thing before we before we leave. Um, 
thank you all for, for joining us today and I hope you come again for our, our next webinar in our series. Uh, if you are interested or you've got colleagues who are interested in seeing some of the Dracontis and Esri uh, integration uh, and happen to be going to the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference in Orlando, Florida this weekend. Come swing by the Esri booth and we'd be glad to show you some of that. Both myself and James will be there and we'll be showing off some of these new capabilities. So please feel free to, to, to drop by or just shoot us an email uh, at, these, uh, at the email addresses below. Thanks again everyone for joining and we'll see you again soon.